That's a great picture. Welcome back, everybody. Here to make us a mouthwatering seared ahi tuna with a yam puree and a ginger maple miso sauce that will make your mouth water. Mm. Welcome back, the owner of LA's Manhattan Beach Post, Chef David LeFevre. We're so excited. Thanks for having me back. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. It's always such a treat yeah. when you're here. Thank you very much. I mean, it's not every day we get like a chef of your status here. To <laughs> oh, come on. Come on. Joining Cam at the counter is Maria yep. and Orly, yeah. all yeah. very We're big excited. fans We're very of your work. To you already. So, the first thing thing that we should do and, and we should know about making seared ahi tuna is um, oh searing it correctly. Now yeah. there is a way to sear it correctly. Well right? yeah the first thing you know with if you the first thing you have to do is get great tuna. Okay. Right you got to start with a great product to end up with a great product right. So you want to make sure that the flesh is bright red and that when you touch it it springs back and then when you smell it it should smell like the ocean not like the beach. Oh, that's a good tip. Ah. Like the oh. ocean, not the beach. I right. like that. That's right. So, okay, so we get our fresh tuna, our, yep. our very good quality tuna, and then it's pretty basic how you season it. It's not much Super to it. simple. Salt, pepper, and then we use some black sesame seeds, okay. about one teaspoon per each for each piece mm. of tuna. So pretty generously. Exactly. You want it nice and generously, and it'll give that nice flavor when you're eating it later. Okay. So we just take a little bit of sesame oil, right, into a nice hot pan. Okay, you can see it smoking already. Right. We're just gonna tilt that pan around, right? Let the oil, see how the oil hydroplanes? Yes. That means it's nice and hot. And then we're gonna just pop it in there. We're gonna sear that for about 15 to 30 seconds per side. So that's mm -hmm. really the key because I think a lot of times when people sear, mm -hmm. I'm very guilty of this, <laughs> I Me sear too. a little too long. Yeah. And then suddenly I'm like, well, I don't think I seared it. I think I just cooked it all the way through. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's like you can't imagine that it just takes that, that little way. amount of time. Yeah. And you'll see, look, I can take this right now. It's been about 15 seconds. I'm oh turning gosh, it I've got that. a brown sear on see? it. Nice and brown. So don't walk away is what you're saying. You well, really. Literally, while I'm cooking in the restaurant, sometimes I'll count in my head. I'll count to 15 while everything else is going on. I get to 10 and then I start come backing over and turn it over to the next side. And really, remember, this is a sushi quality tuna. So all you're doing is getting a little flavor, a little bit of sear on the outside and keeping that incredible quality on the inside. And an another question I have, mm -hmm. I guess, well, because you're going so quickly, it should be okay. But how do you keep the sesames from burning? Oh, that's well, they because, shouldn't because it's oh. only about 30 seconds per side, and okay. I don't toast these ahead of time. I don't toast them. I keep them raw, so when I do sear them, you're not cooking toasted mm. tuna and already. Then it's bitter. Exactly. Chef, could you use the other sesame seeds, the white ones? You could use the white okay. ones 100%. Sometimes you can even use a mix of them both, right? Oh, okay. What okay. other fish would you recommend if, if you weren't having tuna? And I don't know why you wouldn't have tuna, but just in <laughs> case you didn't want to have tuna. Well, I think that, no, it's right here, it's fine. Okay. I think that you could use scallops would be great with it, right? Mm. Scallops, scallops, however, whatever way you want to pronounce mm. them, right? Um, you could use something like halibut as well, um, but you would just have to cook it a little bit differently. Scallops, you cook a little bit longer. Halibut, you'll cook a little bit longer. You might want to pan roast them where you start to pan and put them in the oven instead okay. of just going into, um, instead of just going, you know, in the pan and then finishing it in the pan by itself. Okay. So while our tuna rests over here, you're mm -hmm. going to make this delicious gingered maple miso sauce, oh. which is really clever. Like, <laughs> right? We've had miso sauce, you've had ginger miso sauce, but a, a gingered maple miso sauce yep. is, it's, Unique. Well, thank you. Thank I you. I appreciate and this is that. his recipe 100%. How does you so come up with this? What you do is, well, a lot of times you have miso with miso paste with something that's a little bit sweet, maybe mirin, yep. right? Um, ginger is a very, a very classic, you know, a classic combination with it. And so, really, what we did was like, okay, instead of using mirin, what do we have in the United States that's really great, has that sweet, and it's maple, right? And so, from the great Northeast, right, right our from, maple syrup. From Cameron's part of the There we world. go, right? <laughs> Canadian. Your peoples, that's what we're talking <laughs> about, right? I appreciate you, David. <laughs> so, all we do is we add that maple syrup, we whisk in the miso, and we whisk in the ginger, and as it warms up a little bit more, that miso paste will break down, right? And then, so we have miso paste in there for that kind of salt umami, right? We've got the maple in there for the sweetness. We got that ginger for that kind of like zing to it, right? And then just pepper, and then we're, I'll add a little bit of salt, but you don't need much, remember, because it's got that miso in there. So you've got a salt component, right? When you're using soy, when you're using miso, you can take it easy with that, okay? And then do you add butter? Yeah, the only thing you'll do at the end is just add a little bit of butter. Right, just to finish it, to kind of glaze it over and sauce it over, I mean, right? you could put that sauce pretty much on anything. Well, right? you know, yeah, exactly. And then if you have some leftover, make some French toast the next morning and have it on your French toast because oh it's actually God. really good. Amazing. Really good. Really? So now the wow. yam puree, which is a basic yam puree, right? Right, so garnet yams, other wine knows, a lot of people refer to these as sweet potato. You just roast them, take the skin off, add a little bit of fall spice, pumpkin spice, that clove, mm. allspice, right? A little bit, a tiny bit of butter if you want, 
and then put that in the middle of the plate and then just work it out, make it nice and round, right? Just use that spoon. Oh, it's so good. And look at how it brightens up once it thins out yeah. a little bit there and turns that nice bright orange. We've got some grilled scallions here, Ooh. right? So all we've done with these is some sesame oil, salt and pepper, and really charred them, charred them in a hot skillet, mm. okay? Then we've got, obviously, we've got our tuna. Beautiful. Right, and so you don't need to slice this super thin. It's a very tender fish as is, right? All I'm gonna do is cut this into three pour three medallions, okay? And then stack it. Look at that, cuts right through it. Boom, perfect cook. Oh my goodness. You can go more of that, more than that if you want, but you really don't need to. You really don't need to. And then all we're doing is just stacking them on the plate. I love the way you it guys It almost looks plate. like a little sushi roll. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, right, with the, with the, like yeah, the nori's on the, the outside, leg. right? That's cool, totally. We have some shishito peppers. Great thing about shishito peppers is they're not super spicy, but like one in 10 is. Oh, no. So there's always that you know, little bit of <laughs> excitement. Always, and I'm always You never know who's gonna get it, right? You go to the restaurant and go, no, 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 you guys, these are not spicy, just get them. Yeah, and just try it, right? The person uh -huh. I say that to always gets the one and thinks I was lying. I totally right? swear, they're really <laughs> not. We're gonna take that, look at this. So this is that sauce we had. It's got almost like a honey consistency, a little bit thinner than a honey consistency, wow. right on top. Do a little bit on the outside so everybody can see it, right? Oh, chef. Okay. This plate. And then all we have is some roasted peanuts, right? A lot of nut allergies out there, but you know what? If they're not allergic, we're serving it, right? A couple cilantro leaves, and it's just a really fun, beautiful green and orange and red and all those beautiful colors. So all the food in his restaurants are the, is, is perfect. Fishing with Dynamite is a restaurant in Manhattan Beach, and we oh. frequent the restaurant, oh, and you? it is wonderful. So this, Thank I love you. how easily you break this down so we can make it at home. It's a really easy dish. It really is. It's just making sure you don't overdo it. Don't overcook the fish. Start delicious. with a great piece of fish. Don't be afraid. Absolutely exactly. delicious, as Debbie's about right. to find out. Mm. Please dig in, you guys. Thank you so much for being here, Chef. Full recipe, you know where to go, hallmarkchannel.com. And also connect with David on his social media as well. Right, Deb? Yeah. Mm. Amazing. And you up. know what? Real quick, congratulations, you're getting married. Yeah, you. Yeah. 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 married four months. Yeah, man.